Welcome back to the library, everybody. So this week we have traveled to the continent of Australia. Now, I know it's really hot out there today. If you've been outside, you know it's really, really warm. If we were in Australia, it would be winter because Australia is in the Southern Hemisphere. So they are opposite our seasons. So just like we started summer here a couple weeks ago, in Australia, they started winter there a few weeks ago. So I think the weather would be a little bit different if we were in Australia today. Now, Australia is a really cool place. We talk about the continent of Australia, but it actually takes in a couple of islands like Tasmania and New Zealand as well. So when we talk about being on the continent of Australia, we're actually including a couple other places in those travels. And I think one of the really cool things about Australia is all of the animals in Australia. So we brought some pictures today of some cool Australian animals like kangaroos and koalas and wombats. Do you know what these have in common? Hmm, all of these animals are a very special kind of animal called a marsupial. Marsupials are animals that carry their babies around in a pouch. Now, Australia has lots and lots of marsupials, even more than just those three that we mentioned. There are several others. Here in North America, we have our own marsupial that I bet you have probably seen through the years. Now, this is one of Miss Leanne's favorite puppets. We don't use him very often. It's a shame. We're going to have to find more stories so that we can use our possum. Have any of you ever seen a possum? A possum is an odd looking animal, isn't it? It's got this long bald tail and they're furry. They've got this long snout. Possums are really cool animals. Sometimes when we see them, they're a little scary looking. And they also do things like they hiss when they're scared. Have you ever been around a cat that hisses at you when it's scared? Well, possums will do that too. And I happen to like possums. So I thought it would be cool if we gave you some facts about possum. Because I think if you knew more about them, I think you would find them pretty cool. So our possum is the only marsupial that is found north of Mexico. So our, this is our marsupial. Um, they can't choose when they play dead. Have you ever heard that the a possum will play dead? It'll kind of roll over. It'll lay there. It gets really kind of stiff and its tongue will hang out. Its eyes stay open and it really looks like it's dead. Well, they do that because they're really, really afraid. They're really stressed about what is going on around them. They can't help it when that happens. They don't get to pick when they play dead. So I thought that was also a pretty cool fact that maybe they're a little surprised by it too. Um, when they play dead, they also let off a really bad smell. So not only do they lay there looking dead, they gotta smell dead too. And that's to get the predator that is after them to go away and leave them alone. It's pretty smart. Um, they slow the spread of Lyme disease. You know what these guys eat? They eat ticks. They eat a lot of ticks. Have, ever, have you ever had a tick? Or maybe your cat or dog has had a tick on its fur? They're kind of a scary thing because they can make you pretty sick. These guys gobble them up. They eat 90% of the ticks that get on them. And the National Wildlife Federation says that a single possum can eat 5,000 ticks in a season. That's pretty good. We don't want ticks to get on our cats or dogs or on us. So these guys are pretty good things to have around. They gobble them right up. You know what else? They are immune to most snake venom. 
How cool is that? The only snake that they are not immune to their venom is a coral snake. So all of those scary snakes around, these guys eat them up. They don't care. And because of that, they um, there are scientists who try to use their, their anti-venom powers to help people out that get bit by snakes. These guys hardly ever get rabies. Everyone thinks that they carry rabies. I think that's why sometimes we're kind of afraid of them. But marsupials have a really low body temperature. So because of that, it doesn't make their bodies a very good place for rabies to, to attack. So it's not a disease that they get. So just because you see one, please don't think that they have rabies and that they're going to attack you. They're not. They're more afraid of you than you could be of them. Um, their tails act like another appendage. So these guys can hang by their tails. That kind of tail is a special tail. It's not like a dog tail or a cat tail. Their tails they actually use, and that is called a prehensile tail. So tails that animals can use to hang from are called prehensile, and our possum has one. Um, and last, these guys are clean. Do any of you have cats and they're constantly licking their fur and keeping themselves clean? This guy does that too. It's one of the cleanest animals out there. So I hope that our little possum facts will help you when you see one of these guys to realize that they're actually really cool things to have around. And like I said, marsupials. So they, just like a kangaroo and a wombat and a koala, they have a pouch where they would carry their babies. And you might want to look. There are often pictures online of baby possums all lined up down mama's back as they travel along. So I'm going to put our friend the possum over to the side, our marsupial. And I have two more pictures for you. The other day we were talking about a bird called a kookaburra. A kookaburra is a very cool bird that lives in Australia. This sounds like it's laughing. This morning, I posted some videos from YouTube to our Facebook page, Ohio County Public Library Kids page. And one of those videos is a little 30 second video of a kookaburra laughing. Kind of made me laugh too. So if you need a little giggle today, check that out. And our last animal that lives in Australia is a platypus. Look at that crazy guy. So a platypus has a bill and webbed feet like a duck, but it's furry like a mammal, and it lays eggs. It is one of two animals in Australia that are a certain kind of mammal that lays eggs eggs. The platypus is one of those and the echidna is the other one. So Australia is full of really cool stuff. Now our story for today is possum magic just like our little possum. Um, it is a different type of possum that we would see here. Um, but this is one of my favorite stories. This one is also by Mem Fox. We read a Mem Fox book the other day called Koala Lou. We read that Tuesday during story time. This one is illustrated by Julie Vivas. So, possum magic. Once upon a time, but not very long ago, deep in the Australian bush lived two possums. Their names were Hush and Grandma Poss. Grandma Poss made bush magic. She made wombats blue, she made kookaburras pink, and she made dingoes smile and emus shrink. But the best magic of all was the magic that made Hush invisible. What adventures Hush had. Because she couldn't be seen, she could be squashed by koalas. Because she couldn't be seen, she could slide down kangaroos. 
because she couldn't be seen. She was safe from snakes, which is why Grandma Poss had made her invisible in the first place. But one day, quite unexpectedly, Hush said, Grandma, I want to know what I look like. Please, could you make me visible again? Of course I can, said Grandma Poss, and she began to look through her magic books. She looked into this book, and she looked into that. There was magic for thin, magic for fat, magic for tall, magic for small, but the magic she was looking for wasn't there at all. Grandma Poss looked miserable. Don't worry, Grandma, said Hush. I don't mind. But in her heart of hearts, she did. All night long, Grandma Poss thought and thought. The next morning, just before breakfast, she shouted, It's something to do with food. People food, not possum food. But I can't remember what. We'll just have to try and find out. So later that day, they left the bush where they had always been to find what it was that would make Hush seen. They ate Anzac biscuits in Adelaide, Mornay and Minty's in Melbourne, steak and salad in Sydney, and pumpkin scones in Brisbane. Hush remained invisible. Don't lose heart, said Grandma Poss. Let's see what we can find in Darwin. It was there in the far north of Australia that they found a Vegemite sandwich. Grandma Poss crossed her claws and crossed her feet. Hush breathed deeply and began to eat. A tail, a tail, shouted both possums at once. For there it was, a brand new visible tail. Later on a beach in Perth, they ate a piece of pavlova. Hush's legs appeared. So did her body. You look wonderful, you precious possum, said Grandma Poss. Next stop, Tasmania. And over the sea, they went. In Hobart, late one night, in the kitchens of a casino, they saw a lamington on a plate. Hush closed her eyes and nibbled. Grandma Poss held her breath and waited. It's worked! It's worked! She cried. She was right. Hush could be seen from head to tail. Grandma Poss hugged Hush and they both danced. Here we go round the lamington plate till early in the morning. From that time onward, Hush was visible, but once a year on her birthday, she and Grandma Poss ate a Vegemite sandwich, a piece of pavlova, and half a lamington, just to make sure that Hush stayed visible forever. And she did. And at the back of our story is a map of Australia with the different places that our characters visited. And it explains to us what those foods were. So an Anzac biscuit is a traditional rolled oat and syrup cookie. Mm, we like cookies. Mornay is a supper dish of fish and white sauce topped with breadcrumbs and browned in the oven. Minties are peppermint flavored nougat candies. Vegemite is a salty yeast spread used on toast and in sandwiches. Pavlova is a meringue shell topped with fresh fruits and whipped cream. And Lamington is a square of sponge cake dipped in thin chocolate icing and rolled in coconut. So sounds like they had yummy travels all around Australia to make little pos visible again or a little hush visible again. So that is our story for today. I hope that you like that one. Our craft today is a really simple one. I brought lots of other stuff just because this is one of those crafts that once I tell you how to do, you can spend the rest of the afternoon making as many as you want. Now remember, I told you the other day it didn't really matter what it was that you used. I told you that you could use paint stir sticks. That was what was listed on our supply list. Um, I used rulers. I went downstairs to storage. I found a couple of wooden rulers and I just painted them up so they were pretty. You don't even have to do that if you don't want to. You could use sticks. You can use dowel rods. You can make them little and use popsicle sticks if you want to do that. But these are Aboriginal clapping sticks. Now, Aborigines would be the native people in Australia, like Native Americans here in our country. The Aborigines were the original people who lived in Australia. And they would use these to 
clap together to make music. So they were called Bilma. I can't remember now what they were officially called in the Aborigines language, but they are clapping sticks. They would use wood from a eucalyptus tree. Do you know what likes eucalyptus trees? These guys, koala bears. Koalas eat lots and lots of eucalyptus leaves, but the Aborigines in Australia would use the wood from the tree to make clapping sticks that they would use in ceremonies to make music. So you see, I painted mine yellow. I thought that would look pretty. So I basically just painted mine and then I put some pretty designs on them just so they would be fun looking and do anything too hard. Just some lines and some circles and some triangles and some dots and things like that. So you can decorate yours however you want to decorate them. And when you're done, you can use them to tap along with a song. So that is our story um, and extra information and activity for today. They kind of look like Grandma Poss and Hush, don't they? Yeah, I think they kind of do. So that concludes our activity and story for today. A couple of reminders. The bottom of your screen, don't forget to sign up for the summer reading program and don't forget to put in there the minutes that you have been reading or have been read to or have listened to me read to you this summer. Our next prize drawing will be Monday at noon. So don't forget, get in there and get logged on so that you are in for next week's prize drawing. Things coming up. Next week, we are traveling to Antarctica. So that should be a pretty cool week for stories and activities. Monday morning at 1030, we will broadcast our toddler time. Tuesday at 10 a.m., we will do our story time. Next Thursday at noon, again, will be a story and an activity. Next week is a cool one. I think you're going to like this activity. But this week, we did not do an outside story time. It's really hot out there. And I worried about finding a place that would be shady and cool enough that you guys wouldn't, be, wouldn't mind being outside for a story. So hopefully next week we will be able to meet up someplace around Wheeling at one of the parks and we can do an outside story time. We'll see how much the weather cooperates with us. So those are my other announcements today. But my last reminder is if you need some books, please get online reserve some books. You can come to the library in the parking lot. We will bring them out to you. I have still been trying to check to see if there are kids picking up books. And if they are, I've been trying to do those deliveries myself so I can come outside and say hi to you. But if not, someone else here at the library will bring them to your car. So don't forget, if you need books, you can call the library at 304 Two three two zero two four four. If you know exactly what you want, you can talk to someone at the reference desk and they will put them on reserve for you. If you don't know what you want, you can talk to the reference desk and they'll help pick out some books they think you would be interested in. Or you can get on the library website at ohiocountylibrary.org and use your library card number. Reminder, if you have forgotten, you are going to use your library card number. That's going to be a number that starts with 22700, and then it's going to have some other numbers after that. That's your username. Your password is the first four letters of your last name lower case. That will get you on so that you can reserve books online, which means you can just look through the catalog and see what it is that we have. And again, put those on reserve. When we pull them for you, we'll give you a phone call. You can set up what time you want to come get on which day that you want to come get them. And then when you pull in our parking lot, you just give us a phone call and we walk right out and deliver them right to your car. So if you need some stuff to read, I know I've been doing lots of reading these last few days because it's been really hot out. So staying in the house has been a little bit better. So you can do that so that you can get some books at home. All right, guys, I miss you terribly. I wish that we were spending summer reading together, but it's nice to be able to visit with you online. So don't forget to check out YouTube 
I have been trying to post some things. I have a couple other videos that I'm going to be posting today and tomorrow so that you can learn a little bit more about Australia and the other areas that take up the continent of Australia. All right. I will see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks.